The oceans provide 99% of the Earth's living space, the largest space in our universe known to be inhabited by living organisms. Protecting our environment and the animals that inhabit it is a challenge we all must undertake. On today's show, we'll check out the Marine Mammal Center in San Pedro, California, where injured seals and sea lions receive assistance. And later, we'll sail the high seas with a top sail youth program. All this and more. I'm James Ramirez, and welcome to the Portfolio. our pop quiz. Do you know which aquatic bird has the greatest sense of smell? Is it the penguin, the pelican, or the albatross? Stay tuned for the answer. Many marine scientists now believe that overfishing is the biggest threat to the ocean environment, even greater than other environmental disruptions such as pollution. Overfishing can remove the natural source of food for mammals like sea lions and seals. The Marine Mammal Center of Fort MacArthur provides rehabilitative services to California mammals, and I had to check it out. My name is David Bard. I'm the director at the Marine Mammal Care Center at Fort McCarthy. So David, this here is the main area for injured mammals? Yes, we have a total of 13 animal enclosures outdoors and then some indoor space for housing our patients. All right, and most of which are seals, sea lions? Or? Seals and sea lions. We're the uh, only rehab hospital in Los Angeles County for pinnipeds, for marine mammals. Uh -huh. um, we'll uh, treat them for whatever's ailing them. We'll uh, get them released back out into the, their natural environment. Wow. And what are, the, what are the most common types of injuries that these guys are coming in with? We see any number of ailments. Most common are, are natural ailments, things like bacterial and viral infections, kidney problems, parasites. Um, we also see uh, some natural injuries from things like sharks and stingray barbs. Um, we see about 10 or 11 percent of our cases every year uh, come in for human interaction, human-related injuries. Uh, some of those are fishery interactions from things like hooks and lines. Some of them are gunshots, some of them are knife wounds, uh, ingested debris, things of that nature. So when you uh, receive one of these uh, mammals, how long might they, they one stay here on average? Or? Well, it's sort of like asking how long you stay at a hospital. Uh -huh. um, depends on what's wrong with them, depends on how long it takes to, to heal them. Uh, average is probably about two months, uh, but certain things like eye injuries might take longer. Okay, so you'll keep them as long as it takes to get them well. Yeah, well, they need to be feeding competitively, they need to be at a safe release weight, uh -huh. they need to be off of medications, and obviously healed from whatever brought them in in the first place. Wow, and then from here, once they're healed, you release them into the wild, or does someone else take care of that? Nope, we do the releases. Right. Um, most of our releases are going to be beach releases, and uh, that's a, a real rewarding way for our volunteers to to sort of uh, say goodbye and, and yeah. take in all the, the experience of the, the rehab work that they help do. Yeah, I bet to kind of work through the injury, get him healed, and see him go back in the wild must be pretty exciting. Yeah, kind of kind of bittersweet too. Yeah, right, you miss uh, them. While it's sad to see him go, we, we know that that's where they belong, right. and that's basically the culmination of all the, the hard work we've been doing here. Yeah, absolutely. And then what types of, how many species, or what types of species are found here in California? We'll typically see four or five species. Um, they're all indigenous to Los Angeles County, which is our area of coverage. Uh, most common are the California sea lions, like the ones you saw today. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also see uh, northern and Guadalupe fur seals, uh, northern elephant seals, and harbor seals. This year, how many have you taken in? Well, this year we had a record season because of the El Nino conditions in the ocean. Uh, we had over 550 intakes this year. Uh, a typical year will bring between three and 400 animals. Wow, that's amazing. And then how do you find the, the injured mammals? Does someone call you or 
Uh, we're fortunate in LA in that there are several rescue agencies along the coastline who do the initial response. Mm -hmm. uh, so those those rescue agencies will uh, go out and, and respond to calls from the public or from the lifeguards, uh, and then they'll transport the animals to us. It's good to see all these tanks and see what you guys are doing here. It's great. Right. David, so tell me the story on this big guy. This is an adult male California sea lion. He came in um, with eye issues on both eyes. He's completely blind in, in one eye and mostly blind in the other. Oh, wow. uh, so as such, he's not a, a release candidate. He won't be able to go back into so, the wild and survive. Oh, you'll always keep him here, or might he go no, to another we, facility? We don't house animals full time, so what we're going to do is find a placement option for him at a zoo or an aquarium. Wow, and he's about 700 pounds, you said? Yeah, last weighed in at 673. <laughs> that is huge. So what kind of feeding are you doing every day to him? How many right, pounds of fish? Right now, um, he gets several pounds of fish three times a day, and. Um, we're working on some habituating and some basic behaviors. What you saw Dr. Palmer doing was targeting. She'd hold out her fist, mm -hmm. and uh, he would touch his nose to her fist on command and then get a fish. Wow, that's um, amazing. We're also teaching him basic skills like water and just basically getting him uh, habituated to people so that he's uh, better prepared for his transition. Wow, that's amazing. So what kind of fish are you feeding him here? Uh, these are herring. Herring. Yeah? Everybody gets herring? Main, uh, the main fish source is herring here. Sometimes we use smelt or sardines, anchovies uh -huh. or squid. Wow, but that's quite a menu. Fish. Yeah. How many pounds might you go through a day or a week of? Well, it depends on how many animals are here. Right. So right now, um, like this particular um, bucket I'm weighing out is for Pen 5 for the PM feed. And I'm going to weigh out 8.5 pounds. But they get that three times a day. Wow. So it's a little over 25 pounds they're going to get in the yeah. day. But that's just the pen. Yeah. So it kind of depends on which animal you're talking about. Yeah, right. Good, good. I'm going to go see these guys over here. I'll let you keep the feet and Oh, Thanks. thank you. Hope they enjoy it. All right. My name is Lauren Palmer. I'm the veterinarian here at the Marine Mammal Care Center. Lauren, you know, what's the most common maybe procedure? Or what do you do most here as far as a surgery or things like that? Or? We don't do very many surgeries here because there are not very many injuries that lend themselves to surgeries. The animal has to be um, suitable to be re-released into the, you know, into the ocean. But the most common thing is malnutrition. Right. So we try and um, provide them nutrition when they perhaps have, a, you know, a cough or pneumonia or parasites or something that will drag them down and and uh, kind of affect their immune system. And then we just support them uh, through that and then try and get them better and send release them back them. out and release yeah, them and give them another chance. Wow, that's great. How many, how long you've worked here? For I've been center? here five years, a little over five years. So you love your work? I do love my work. Oh, yeah. I great. do, yeah. That sounds awesome, working with the seals and, and especially releasing them back in the wild is very gratifying for you. It is. I love to, uh, it's great to see them go back and have another chance and uh, most of them probably would not have uh, made it without right. some human intervention to some give them help. a second chance. Yeah. Lauren, thank you so much. It was great visiting your uh, center today. Thank you yeah. for coming by. Great work you're doing. It's so fantastic. Thank you. Earlier in the show, I asked which aquatic bird has the greatest sense of smell. The choices were a penguin, a pelican, or the albatross. If you selected albatross, you were right. The albatross has a tube like beak, which lets them smell food from 15 miles away. Ships under sail open new horizons to early explorers. Today, ships are still opening new doors to a whole new world, one child at a time. Created in 1992 as an affiliate of the Los Angeles Maritime Institute, 
The Top Sail program employs two custom-built Brigantine tall ships to provide a real-world training ground for you. The program invites kids from various elementary and junior high schools in the Southern California community. To learn the art of tall ship sailing, enlisting experienced staff and volunteers who act as both teachers and mentors, building both self-esteem and character. I had a chance to meet up with the ship captain, Michael McLaughlin. Captain Mike, so describe the uh, Top Sail program to me. Basically, it's using the boat to teach kids about life. Mm -hmm. Uh, the boat puts them in an environment where none of their normal defenses work. So they're just wide open. And uh, you get to stuff all kinds of things inside then. Yeah, their new experiences head. for some yeah. of these guys. Never yeah. been on the ocean, maybe. Never been on a boat. Uh -huh. uh, and live five blocks from it all their lives. Right, wow. They're, they're being taught how to live, actually, and the boat is the venue where they're learning it. Uh, we teach them how to care for each other, uh, how to care for a community, just how to live and all the things you need to know as you're growing up. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, there is no nuclear family to teach them this. Mm -hmm. And it's been shown statistically that, that the program ends up with less teenage pregnancies, more kids going to high school, and many more going to college. It's all positive, nobody loses. <clears throat> what are some of the jobs that they might get to do or you're gonna have them do? Well, you start them out slow. You teach them it in, in chip parlance, learning the ropes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know they've learned how to pull on the line, how to belay it. And from then on, you can move along. One of the key experiences on board ship was to go along where participants climb to the top of the ship's masthead. But it signifies a deeper meaning to the ship's captain. So tell me uh, a little bit about the term going aloft. That's all about guts and self-esteem. Uh -huh. You know, uh, usually it's not the big loudmouth kids that go. It's, it's the little ones, you know. The, the, the braggart has a lot to lose if he doesn't have the guts to go aloft, so he won't even try. Right. But the little kid, he's up there in a heartbeat. So that climb goes a long way for uh, kids. To build his self-esteem and his, his uh, self-worth right. and uh, his standing in the community. Oh, what a great place to learn out here, huh? Yes. Thanks, Mike. You're quite welcome. Right. Okay, so tell me what you guys like about coming to sail on this boat. Um, well, it's really fun to come and hang out with friends and come see what really is out here and enjoy life. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You having a good time? Yeah, I got to climb up there with these things on. Yeah, so you don't get to do that every day. No. Yeah. What do your friends at school think about when you come out and do these things on the boat? They think it's cool. They Sometimes they're jealous. Oh, yeah? yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice, because you get to come on the ocean and do new things. And yeah. not Tie do knots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Solar power is the conversion of sunlight into electricity. And the Port of Los Angeles has taken this conversion to a whole new level. The Port of Los Angeles Cruise Terminal has gone green with the installation of a new rooftop solar panel system. The zero emission silent photovoltaic system will generate 1.2 million kilowatt hours of green electricity, which is equivalent to powering 100 homes for one year. Equivalent to the size of three football fields, the system is comprised of 5,140 210 watt solar modules. The Environmental Protection Agency estimates that over the solar system's lifetime, it will prevent roughly 22,800 metric tons of carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere, the equivalent of powering 4,000 
367 cars for a year. At a cost of $10.8 million, the installation is expected to provide an energy cost saving of over $200,000 and is the first phase of a multi-location solar power program that will eventually produce 10 megawatts of solar system generation capacity. Thanks for watching this edition of Portfolio. For more information on the topics you saw today, just hit us up on our website, portoflosangeles.org.